Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Isn't that cute? I wish I had videotaped in there. Howdy everyone, this is Trisha and welcome to my channel. This time I'm going to be offering you a three-part basic floral design course. So today, Tuesday, and the next two Tuesdays following, I will be teaching you how to make some floral designs for your home. This is a basic beginner's course. I won't be using any professional terms. I have taught uh, floral design, so I'm going to be using the same terms that I did when I was teaching uh, cl classes at uh, Michael's because I did work for Michael's for a very long time. I was very successful not only doing the floral arrangements as a floral designer, but I also did uh, courses teaching many other things besides floral design. So I hope you enjoy this. Now, I want to first do an introduction to all of them. So you will be seeing the same introduction for all three videos. And again, if you've already seen this in the first video and you don't care to watch it in the second or the third, then skip right on over to the actual arrangement um, that I'll be teaching you for that day. All right, so <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you uh, what to keep in mind first. The, what you wanna keep in mind is your theme. Where do you wanna place this arrangement? Um, so if this is in your home, think about uh, where um, in your home you're going to place it. Is this going to be a uh, something for the kitchen, something for your living room, something for your bedroom, maybe even in the bathroom or in your office? And uh, what theme do you have decorated in that particular room? Maybe you want to add some fruit in there, some little veggies, things like that. If it's in the kitchen, maybe some seashells or things like that that are kind of nautical if you have that in your bathroom. So you want to keep those things in mind when you are creating your arrangement or when you are choosing the elements for your uh, arrangement. And uh, speaking of placement or where you're gonna put it, that is the second thing to consider, is the perspective and the actual placement of the arrangement. Now we've, uh, I've already told you what room now, where in that room is this going to be placed? Is this going to be placed somewhere where it's gonna be against the wall? Is it gonna be in the center of the room somewhere? Is it gonna be at a table? where some of you are going to be sitting at and eating and you want to be able to look over this arrangement. You never want to create an arrangement that is so tall that it's blocking you if you're all sitting around this table and you want to speak to each other. So that's something to consider. Also, you're going to be uh, taking into account the texture. That is the texture of your flowers, which kind of, kind of goes into the theme of your flowers. So maybe you're looking for something country and you want to use some dry flowers. So dry flowers would be the texture of your flowers or maybe you'll be using silk flowers, or maybe some of you will go ahead and go into using actual fresh flowers. But that is a different treatment of the flowers. For now, we are going to be working with artificial or faux flowers. All right, so just keep that in mind. So there are different textures, so you need to decide what you're going to use. Now, there are cases where you can kind of mix it too, and I will at the end, I'm gonna do a little mixing just so that you can see what I mean by that. <clears throat> the other um, thing you need to consider is going to be the shape of your arrangement. Now, as I said earlier, if you're going to places at a table where uh, people are talking to each other, you don't want something uh, too large. So you may consider something round or maybe something horizontal or what I like to call a swag arrangement. But we will go into that as the classes proceed. And then of course, there is your size and proportion. Size is the overall size of the arrangement. Where is this going to go? Is this on a little desk in an office where you need something small? Or is this an arrangement that you want somewhere in your grand entry or your living room and you want something large? That is the size. The proportion is the size of the individual items in the arrangement or whether I like to call the elements, which are your flowers, any fillers, your greenery and things like that. Things should be a little bit proportioned, uh, keep uh, them a little bit natural looking. So those are the things that you will be considering. Now, the supplies that you also need to have on hand for these courses will be obviously a container vase, whatever it is that you want to put your arrangement in. And I have one here, for example, I have a vase here just to show you. This is what I have chosen to start off with. Okay, you will be seeing this in my first uh, course. So that is a vase. You can use a uh, just a regular glass vase. You can use a bucket if you want, a wooden box, a boot, whatever you find that you can actually put things inside and you are willing to let a little bit of hot glue go in there. Okay, so then you will need some styrofoam 
and I just have this and I got this from a six pack of styrofoam from Hobby Lobby you can get your styrofoam from wherever you want and uh, this is more of a condensed styrofoam okay so just so you'll know uh, if you're curious about an item called Oasis Oasis is for fresh flowers and like I said we're gonna be working with faux flowers so we're not gonna be using Oasis Oasis is used to dip into water and absorb water so that then you can put fresh flowers into and that is another course and if you're interested or class if you're interested in that I will be more than happy to show you how to prepare a fresh flower arrangement all right also uh, like any other craft that I like to do I like to have my wire cutters I like to have my scissors I like to have some floral wire as you can see here or even some chenille stems but really in floral arrangements I use floral wire and then with that I also use greenery or green floral tape not greenery but green floral tape now uh, if you're working with white stems for whatever reason that you're creating something that has white maybe you want to use a white tape but I always use a green because I always work with green all right also <clears throat> in my floral arrangement I sometimes not always but I also use wooden floral picks and these have a little wire attached as you can see so that is something to consider. You will find these in different sizes. This is just a basic size. If you want to get a longer size, that's up to you. And you can just trim them. And sometimes you just find the wooden picks without the wire, which is fine, because you can always use the wire that you already have, um, that I've already shown you. All right, another thing that you may need are these uh, greenery pins or U pins. They're little metal pins, and they're shaped in a U. Some people call them S pins. I always call them U pins or greenery pins. We're gonna be using these in our arrangement to hold down moss, as so, or you know, a cover. Something to cover our styrofoam with. And now I'm using Excelsior, or some people may call this Spanish moss, or you can just use regular green moss. That is up to you. It all also depends on what you wanna spend. Usually Spanish moss is less expensive. And the natural one is obviously going to be a lot less expensive. Now, some of you may have access to some woods and you can go out and grab some Spanish moss. So why not? Just make sure it is nice and dry. Leave it out in the sun. Spread it out. Let it get nice and dry. Make sure there's no little bugs in it, etc. that have been living in there. Because, you know, you don't want the little bug now to come into your home and you've taken them out of nature. So anyway, I do have some woods around here that I can go to and grab that. Now the next thing, of course, is most important are gonna be your flowers. Now you can go out and get yourself uh, stems of flowers if you want, but I'm gonna recommend that you get yourself some bushes of flowers. And I have some flowers here that I've already purchased and they're all in bushes. All my greenery is in bushes. Basically all my elements are in bushes because I just decide that that is the most cost effective for me. And I liked what I saw, so I went ahead and I got that, but I'm gonna show you an example. Here is a bush of flowers, and I got these, by the way, at Hobby Lobby. You can purchase them at Michael's, but like I said, you can also go to the Dollar Tree and get yourself some inexpensive flowers. Now here is the bush, and as you can see, it's got quite a bit of stems on there. So that is what I'm going to use. I'm just gonna cut them off the bush because I always do, and I always cut them at the longest point. And now I've got some greenery here. This is what I mean by greenery. Fillers would be a smaller flower because this is going to be my focal flower. And that is the other thing that I wanted to talk about with perspective in your flowers. You are going to pick a flower that you like, that is your focal flower, and then you're gonna pick some, you know, some fillers, which could be a smaller flower, maybe some little berries or some little grasses. And then, then of course you have your greenery. All right, well, let's go ahead and get on with our arrangement. All right, our first class in our three-part course will be a round floral arrangement. But first I wanna give you a little tip. I see a lot of people putting together their own arrangements and uh, they usually just take a vase, any vase or container, and then they go ahead and get themselves some little bushes of flowers, which they thought were pretty and they thought you know, would well go well together. So the first thing they do, of course, is remove all the tags because you don't want any tags in your arrangement. But then that's all I see them do. Now, I also see people using scissors to cut into these big, thick wires. So I'm gonna recommend that you please get yourself some wire cutters and don't ruin your scissors. Wire cutters don't have to be expensive. They can be something inexpensive and uh, they work great. So therefore you don't ruin your scissors. Now, my little tip on this is how to put these into your vase. 
Because what I see is people grab the flowers and then they just stick them in there and they say, oh, look at that, isn't that pretty? I made a pretty little flower arrangement. I've seen some people even wire them together to stick them into something because maybe they want one to be a little bit higher than the others. And then I see them do this, where they do something like this and then they wire them and then they stick them in there. But let me give you a little tip when you're using bushes and you just don't have styrofoam, you don't have anything else to work with and you wanna just put it into a vase. What I do is I get my the, the flowers that are the biggest and these are the biggest. So these are gonna be my focal point and I try to find the one that's kind of centered and probably a little bit taller and then the rest of them I just kind of bend them out a little bit. Now I've already bent these a little bit because I was playing with them earlier and uh, trying to decide where I wanted to use them and then I use them for another video. So I just open them up as you can see here. Just spread them out a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and put those in my vase as you can see and there you can just leave them in there and then you will be shaping them as you put in your next one. Here's uh, another uh, flowers that I just you just saw and they're a little bit smaller. I'm gonna move up the leaves just a little bit so they don't interfere with these bottom ones that are on here. Again, I'm also going to be opening these up and there's one in the middle that's probably the tallest. So the other ones, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bend them and I'm gonna put them off to one side of my other bush. And then all you're going to do is just kind of bend them so that they're spread out within your little uh, vase or container. As you can see there, they're a little spread out and just bend them. Okay, anything that you feel like, nope, that's too far over, just bend it a little bit. You're just gonna have to turn it around and look at it and there you go, see, it's already far far more open and it looks like I even put it in styrofoam. Well, I do have a third little bush and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing as open it and then I'll be bending it. And I'm going to insert this one on the opposite side of where I then inserted these pink ones. But I am gonna be bringing around the flowers again and doing a little bending and just making sure that they are placed right maybe where there is some open space. So here you go, simple as that. And I made myself a little arrangement without having to use any wire cutters, any scissors, any styrofoam, just a vase and some three bushes of flowers, which I got at the Dollar Tree. The vase could have been from the Dollar Tree. This is obviously something that I had from something else, but I just wanted you to see how easy it is to make a little flower arrangement if you don't have all the supplies to create something a little more well done and elegant. Of course, these can always pop out. If you're done with that season, do another season of flowers. And that is my little tip. All right, so this is the vase that I have chosen for my round floral arrangement. And you can see here, it is a round vase. It's not exactly round, it's actually, what is this, an octagon, but I'm going to treat it as a round vase. And I have chosen my flowers, which are the ones that you saw here. I think these are called uh, peonies, I believe. And then I've chosen an ivy uh, for my greenery. I'm not using any other elements, but these two for this particular arrangement. And I'm going to be using all the flowers that are on here. And I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This bush has eleven flowers, but it was pretty much a good amount to fill this particular mouth of a vase. And then of course the greenery will fill it in as well. So you wanna keep that in mind, the size of your vase and the amount of flowers you're going to be using. Now, uh, why an odd number? Well, if you go out in nature, you pretty much see things in, in odd numbers. You see a plant growing up and then of course it'll spread out and then it'll have three uh, little branches at first. And there's your, your odd number. Um, yeah, there might be some odd, I mean, some even numbers here and there in nature, but for the most part, you see odd numbers. So that is kind of what, what we work with when we are doing floral arrangement. Not only that, but there's always one flower that you choose to be the one that you put right in the middle that decides the height of your all of your arrangements. So there's always one right in the middle and then everything else forms around it and it kind of mirrors each other. So these all become even and that one in the center is always your odd number. So that is why we are working with odd numbers. Okay, so let's keep in mind the size of our vase. Now this is going to be a round arrangement that I am going to be putting at a set, as a centerpiece 
and my dining room table. So it's not very big. It's not going to take up a lot of space on my dining room table. I also do not want it to be very high because I want us to be able to sit at our dining room table and be able to look at each other. Or this can actually go like at a small uh, breakfast table or something like that. Or you might want to go a little bit smaller for that. Now, keeping that in mind, a rule of thumb in floral arrangement and deciding what height to pick for your flowers is to go the height of your arrangement plus half so then that will move up so you would use a measuring tape or ruler if you want or just eyeball it or twice the height of your vase sometimes even three times the height of your vase but the rule of thumb is one and a half to two times the height of your vase so basically this would be as high as i would want to go but i don't want to go that high because like i said it's going to be at a dining room table where we're all going to be sitting around and talking and eating so we don't want the flowers to obstruct our view of each other so therefore in that case you can go a lot shorter and you don't have to keep the rule of the height of the vase for the height of your flowers okay so we're going to go ahead and create something around so the first thing we want to do is we want to prepare all our supplies and I've shown you the supplies at the introduction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start cutting all the bush, all the stems from my two bushes. So I'm going to get all the uh, flowers off of this bush using my wire cutters. Another thing I didn't mention a tool is my glue gun. Glue gun is really important or a glue uh, plate that has a melted uh, glue in it so that you can use it for your floral design. There's other things that you can use, other uh, tools that you can use, but we don't need to use them. We're gonna be doing a basic uh, floral design here, so we don't need to go into those. All right, if these videos go well and I see lots of uh, a response, we can go further uh, into some um, other supplies that you could use or some other tools that you could use in floral design. But for now, let's keep it simple and let's keep it fun and let's keep it easy. And I'm just now cutting all the greenery from my bush, just separating it all. So I wanna know which ones are the longer pieces and which ones are the shorter pieces. Now I always cut them at their longest point because I don't know if I have to cut them any shorter or how long I'm going to need them. So always at the longest point because I may need it to be even longer. And that is where these uh, particular type of uh, floral picks come in hand. I probably won't be using it in this particular arrangement because I'm going to be keeping everything short. And as you can see, I have long stems, so I don't need to give them any more length than they already have. So we're not going to be using those, but you still need them for the other arrangements we will be doing. So just to get yourself prepared for those. I went ahead and did the introduction. Okay, <clears throat> I got these that fell off of one of them and I'll see where that went. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we want to prepare our vase. So you wanna clean it, remove any stickers, things like that, and whatever might be inside some dust, which I have in here in mind. So I'm just gonna get a little towel here and just dust it off because I have had this in my garage for quite some time. Haha, <laughs> and I'm just gonna dump that whatever. Okay, so you just want to clean it and make sure it's nice and, you know, clean. If you just bought it, then it probably is clean and uh, it's all nasty like mine is. Ha <laughs> Okay. All right, so uh, as I mentioned, I didn't mention my glue gun at uh, the beginning and I don't even have it on now. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and we will be right back. All right, so my hot glue gun is now hot and ready to go and I'm going to prepare my vase as I mentioned before. So we've cleaned it and now we've got our styrofoam here. And uh, how much styrofoam will depend on the size of your vase. And I want to put uh, enough in there so that all my stems can go right into it. <clears throat> so let's see. As you can see the mouth of this, this will fit in just fine if I put it right about right here. But then I might have to go actually a little bit smaller to fit at the bottom of my container. So you can always turn it over and see what the inside of your container is sizes and then just fit that to that so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut this piece in half and i should be using a little craft knife which i didn't tell you about <laughs> but i'm going to go ahead and use my scissors because it's nothing uh, that will dull them um, but don't use your scissors that you use for 
your fabrics. Just use your craft scissors for this. Okay, so now I've got a piece that will sit flat at the bottom. <clears throat> so I can actually push it in and it'll just uh, give me some little indentations here. And then it'll fit just fine flat onto my vase. And that's actually just fine. It's not too low. And you don't want it to be higher than your vase. You don't want it sticking out. So that's a good, good placement. So we're going to go ahead and put, let's make sure it's dust free. I put lots of glue at the bottom. So I'm going to put another craft stick right in my glue stick here. Put lots of glue at the bottom. And you probably want to use a good size glue gun rather than a little mini one for this type of work. Or if you have yourself a little uh, hot glue uh, plate, which I intended on getting myself for Christmas and I didn't do it. You know what? Because I was too busy getting stuff for other people. So here we go. <clears throat> and I still have this piece. So I want to go ahead and stuff some little pieces here on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and cut right in half. And I did so that I would have a nice flat side and a nice flat side just in case I needed that. And then I'm just going to pour some glue in there and some glue against the other piece of styrofoam here. So just push it in like so. And don't worry about how it looks because you're going to be covering all that up. And another one over here. And of course I want glue all over. I'm going to push this piece. right in there like so <clears throat> now I could get another piece because I do have more styrofoam and cut some more pieces and put them on each side on these other sides but I'm not gonna go and do that I'm gonna go ahead and just use that amount and I think that's good enough but you can't fill it in all the way and now I'm gonna take some of this moss just a little bit and I'm gonna take uh, the greenery pins these here and I'm going to add, attach the moss with those pins onto the styrofoam. So I want to tuck them into those little empty spots where no styrofoam went in. I'm going to stuff some of this in there first. Take a little bit more and just spread it out. And you want to open it and spread it out. You don't want to put a big old clump of, of uh, moss in there because that could actually keep uh, your stems from going in there. It'll be blocking them. So you don't want to do that. So just a little bit. It goes a long way. And of course, it's going to get covered a lot by stems. So you just basically want to make sure that you don't see too much on the edges. So now I'm going to use these pins to hold down the moss in there. A little bit more over here, just so that it doesn't move around on me. And uh, I know that it's covering my styrofoam. Stick one right in here and one more. So I use six pins to hold all that in, just like that. So that is ready. And this is gonna be such an easy arrangement. You're gonna be like, oh boy, I'm gonna make a ton of round center pieces now after this. Okay, this is super easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of spread my, my, my uh, stems that I cut from the bush. And I'm going to look for the longest pieces, the tallest one, if you will. I think it's going to be this one right here. I'm just comparing them all to each other. These are my little shorter bits. These are my taller bits, but this one seems to be the longest. And I'm going to insert that right in the middle. And uh, <clears throat> that's going to be my height, okay? So I'm just going to push my leaves up just a little bit because if I was just to leave them all down here, once I get to the lower flowers, it's all just going to get all bunched up and I'm not going to see any greenery up here. So I'm going to push them up just a little bit. And as you can see, I'm going to decide here. This is like really tall. I'm going to decide my height. Now, this is a good height actually to have my arrangement because like I said, one and a half to two times the height of the vase, but I decided that I wanted to go a little bit shorter because I said the one exception is when you're putting it at a table where people are sitting and speaking to each other, so you don't want to block them. So I'm going to go about to this height where therefore I'm pushing my leaves up a little bit more. So this part down here, obviously, it's too long, but I don't need it to be that deep because I'm not going to push it that far into my styrofoam. So I'm just going to cut it right about right here. As you can see that. 
Okay, so that's going to go in about two inches because the rest of it is all going to be up here. So I'm going to put some glue. Now you don't have to put any glue on here if you do not want to have these flowers in there, you know, to be stuck in there. You just want to pull them out easier, easily and then put some other flowers into this vase. But let me tell you, the styrofoam is cheap enough that you can go ahead and pull out these greenery pins and, you know, just... Uh, Basically, what you can do is just uh, use your little knife and then just scrape off uh, the old styrofoam and put a brand new one in there. Or sometimes the styrofoam that's in there, even after you've pulled out glued in stick, uh, stems, is, is uh, good enough so you can reuse it. Anyhow, there's my height of my flower. So that is my center point, okay? That is my center and this is my focal flower and it happens to be my only flower. So now I want to put flowers around it. So now I want to decide how far out I want this to go. So of course I'm going to get my next flower and I'm going to put it at an angle like this and then I'm going to decide well here's where it touches the styrofoam but I need about two inches to stick into the styrofoam. So that is what I'm going to trim off right here and as a matter of fact I can go ahead and get another flower just like it and then just trim them the same size. Actually I want four and I'm picking these because, see, this one has a little smaller one and it has a little baby one next to each other. These would be great to put somewhere in between all of those. So I need uh, four of the same height, or, uh, yep, length, if you will. So there we go. I'm going to cut these. And there we go. Okay, all these little bits, I'm just throwing them to the floor. be nice if I was throwing them in actual trash, but... I am just throwing them on the floor. Okay, so to two inches of this, I'm going to add some glue. And this time, I'm going to insert this at an angle. And I'm just making sure that it is actually going into some styrofoam. And then I can bend it and then bend and shape my flower. See? There we go. All right, now the next one on the other side. So you're just going to mirror what you did on one side to the other side. Okay, keep in mind that two inches of this is going to be inside of the styrofoam. So the way that I do it is I put glue on two inches of it, even if it's just a little bit of glue. And then once I know that all the glue has been inserted, I know that the two inches are, have been inserted into the styrofoam. That's another little tip. <laughs> you could just eyeball it and everything will be just fine. And then as you can see, I have bent it downward and then the flower upward a little bit. So you can shape your, your stems like that when you're putting them into your vase so that they'll be facing the way that you want them to face. Okay, two inches of stem has glue. Push it until I no longer see the glue. Bend it down and then the flower upward. And then just maneuver your little leaves on the stem in a good position where they're not all bunched up together. <clears throat> but keep your arrangement a little open. There we go. So now I've still got more flowers and I've got six. And I've got three that are the same as that and three that are a little bit smaller. But that's okay. I'm just going to mix them up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put flowers in between these and keeping with the same height. So somewhere in here in the height but not straight between them but rather see how I have this opening open space here I want to put my next flower right here but I don't want to put it any higher than this and I don't want to put it further out than these guys okay because we're gonna make, we're trying to make a round shape all right let's go ahead and grab this one and I'm putting it in there and what I'm doing right where the styrofoam is let me put this like that what I'm doing is I'm resting my flower stem like this and then right where my styrofoam is, I'm kind of bending it and deciding the height. So when I bend it, then I decide two inches, and then that's where I'm going to trim it. Okay, so now I'm just going to straighten it up and do three more. Let's do this one. Let's do two of this one with a small flower on it, and then one of these uh, big ones. <clears throat> and then just trim them all basically the same. They don't have to be exact, exact. But that's what I was doing. That's how I measured it. All right, so now I'm going to put, oops, glue, and then right between these two, but between the bottom and this, I'm going to insert this flower. And there you can see, 
And then at this point I can decide that, oh, I want these a little bit further in. So that's what I'm gonna do. Because I feel like they're sticking out a little too much. So I'm just pushing them in a little bit. There we go. So now what I did here, I wanna mirror onto the other side, which is right here. So I'm gonna grab another one that's like it. And right there. So now I've got these two spaces right here. Oh, this has got a, that one's got the little baby one in there. So let's do two that don't. And let me take off some of that greenery. So now I've got these two pieces that I can still use. Put it right in there. And then the other one on the other side to mirror. I don't know if I still sound a little hoarse to you. I'm still trying to get over this flu. Okay, so now we have all these flowers in there. And I do have two flowers left over. And I could stick them in there. Why not? Let's see. Where could we stick them in? I'm going to go ahead and stick. I do this one with the two. I'm going to stick this one. That's one big one. And I'm going to make it a lot shorter. This one a lot shorter as well. And I'm going to put it way, where did I say? Right here. Way here. Right there. Okay. Way right in there. Wait, let me make sure it's sticky. There it is. It's in the styrofoam. I'll do the same to the other side. Now, you don't have to use these. <clears throat> okay. You don't have to use those extra flowers. You can save them and use them for some little corsages. You know, Mother's Day is coming up. Valentine's actually is still not even here. Um, probably, yeah, no, it's not even here when we put up when I put up this. Um, so you could actually just take one of the little flowers and put a little pin on it, stick it on your top if you want. Okay, just make it a little bit shorter. I'm gonna get rid of all this little extra greenery. I don't need that. So now what I want to do, and as you can see, that's perfectly fine, just like that. If I look into it, all I'm going to see is moss because we've covered up our styrofoam. So all we're going to see is moss in there. So that's perfectly fine. But I'm going to go ahead and add some greenery just to add some extra to it. And I've got these long bits and I want to use that. But it's got some, let me get my wire cutters, but it's got some greenery right there where I may want to stick it in. So I'm going to just trim off little bits and those little bits I save them and I use them for little crafts so go ahead and save those if you want I'm going to remove some of this as well now I want to give my round arrangement a little bit of a kind of a, a fall onto my table so this is what I'm going to use these long stems and it's got two on this particular one so that's nice so I'm going to go opposite where you know how I put a, a, an extra flower down here and on this, this flowers over here on each side don't have one. So that's where I'm going to put this particular greenery. And then I'm going to bend it downward. So it's cascading down out of my arrangement. See, and I've bent it downward. So it's cascading down. Okay, let me get another one that's like that because I do have one more. And I'm going to trim off any greenery. You don't have to do that cascading, but that's just a nice little touch that you can. You can actually cut these off from each other and make two separate stems. And then just, uh, so what you can do ahead of time is you can go ahead and fold them like that. So then now this can be going into your styrofoam. Make sure you don't get that glue on your hands now. Push that right in there. Let's cascade this folded, bend it, bend it downward. Bend it some more, a little bit higher, so it cascades a little bit further down, or straighter down, I should say. There's some little bits here of plastic that don't need to be on here, so I'm just tearing that off. Okay, so here you can see where that just cascaded downward. Push that in a little bit more. Bend it a little bit more. Okay, so I want you to see what I've been doing. 
Okay, so now I'm just going to take um, some of these other bits and I'm just going to trim off because I don't need it to be that long. And now I'm just going to go in and fill in <clears throat> between these flowers. See the center point between here and here and of course anywhere like down here and down here and obviously on the other side. So that's what I'm going to be filling some of this greenery right there. Trimming off the legs because I don't need them that long. And just push it in. Now the greenery can come out just a little tiny bit higher than this flower, but not too high that it overtakes. You want to make sure that this is your height and your focal point. So any little bit of greener that does stick out a little bit more is fine, okay? I'm going to take these like little stems that are more, more of a straight stem than rather than a little vine, and I'm going to use those to fill in the rest of my arrangement. So I put kind of a viney one in there, and now I'm using these straighter ones, just pushing it in, making sure it goes all the way in. And grab another one, and I'm going to do the opposite side. And I feel like this one is missing a little greenery, and I'm going to go ahead and use this little bit that was kind of broke off of some other spot. I'm going to put that on there. I just put that little stem in there, so now I'm going to go opposite. And I'm going to push that in. And you kind of have to work it around because, you know, your moss gets in the way. And there you can see how it's getting fuller. And then all you have to do is decide, well, do I need more greenery? Do I want to use this whole bush or do I want to save it for something else? I feel I'm going to save it for something else because I like my arrangement as it is. So there we go. This is a round centerpiece floral arrangement. I hope that was easy enough for you to follow and that you enjoyed this first class. And I hope that you will give me some nice comments down below and give me a nice big old thumbs up because I'm going to give myself a big old thumbs up because I'm sick and I'm doing this. All right. I was, I would just do it because I happen to love you guys. You guys have been very kind to me. You've been very sweet and very defensive of me. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we don't have to be. It's okay. All right. Thank you all very much for your lovely comments that you have left me. And I hope that you do enjoy this particular type of tutorials. And uh, let me know. Should I keep doing it? I'm going to do it. But, uh, you know, let me know what you think. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And uh, share in your social medias. That would help me out a lot. And as always, enjoy. Thank you.